Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today bringing you fresh out of the oven another batch of Xbox news. We got much to talk about today. Another Activision lawsuit. I wanted to talk about this one specifically because a lot of people think this may obstruct the deal between Activision and Microsoft. I want to go ahead and put it out here up front before we even dive into the news. I don't think anything will happen with the deal whatsoever, but there is something to discuss here that I think is much more positive, believe it or not, when it comes to this lawsuit. We'll also be talking about the Xbox Bethesda game showcase for 2022, as it appears we have an actual window, a time frame for how long this showcase will be, and that'll bring into view just how much of each game we may end up seeing. Provided it's edited properly, I think we're gonna have a pretty nice show, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. We're gonna talk about Fable, yes, Playground Games Fable, and the potential concept art leak that happened there that was very old, but it gives me an opportunity to talk a bit about game development, inform you all on a couple of things I have learned through my process, and last but not least, Psychonauts 2 did way better than I think any of us expected, and it dropped day one on Game Pass. So we have a lot to talk about in this video. As always, if you're new here, consider subscribing because we have a lot of Xbox news to go over in the coming weeks as we approach this Xbox Bethesda game showcase. And then of course, after the fact, there's gonna be a lot to discuss. I think Xbox has a lot of interesting things in the cards. So time will tell on that. Let's start off with the Activision lawsuit here. Where this comes from Axios and the article is titled, New York City sues Activision targeting CEO Bobby Kotick. Driving the news, the suit was filed in Delaware on April 26th by New York City employees, retirement system, and pension funds for the city's teachers, police, and firefighters. The group's own Activision stock and belief actions by the gaming's giant's management hurt the company's value. We're going to stop right there. We just talked about recently how the shareholders, 98% of them approved of the deal. This is why I say this won't obstruct things. But I do believe this lawsuit may have a leg to stand on. We're going to dig a bit deeper to discuss why that is the case. Here are some of the details. The lawsuit is an action in Delaware's Court of Chancery that allows stockholders to press companies to open their books and potentially expose wrongdoing. New York City is demanding Activision provide a long list of documents, including material related to the Microsoft deal, info on the five possible buyers cited in Activision's official description of the sale talks, board memos, and more. The city has been pressing Activision for internal documents since the fall, originally to find out what CEO Bobby Kotick knew of sexual misconduct at the company. As laid out in the complaint, New York sought access to Activision's books as a pretext to sue Kodak and board members for allegedly costing the company's value. It expresses frustration that Kodak, already under fire, headed up rapid negotiations in late 2021 to sell the company to Microsoft. Quote, Given Kodak's personal responsibility and liability for Activision's broken workplace, it should have been clear to the board that he was unfit to negotiate a sale of the company, the suit says, but it wasn't, end quote. New York says the Microsoft deal, which is pending regulatory approval, allows Kodak and his fellow directors a means to escape liability for their egregious breaches of fiduciary duty. It also says that Microsoft's $95 a share offer undervalues the company, which was trading at close to that before Activision's public scandals began last summer. The way I'm reading this is that Bobby Kotick and others would be floating out of this company in a golden parachute despite all the wrongdoing, all that they allowed within this company, all of the workplace conditions that have become incredibly toxic. They allowed all that. They did not take any type of action and they'd be floating out with a pretty payday when they sold the company. It appears that this lawsuit is targeting that liability, saying, hey, we should have made more as shareholders, which I think you could get people on board for, because that's why a lot of people approved the deal. There's going to be a nice payday for everyone who's an Activision shareholder who saw this deal coming, was like, yo, we're going to collect a good penny on this one. And so for them, they're probably thinking, well, we could make even more if Bobby Kotick was actually a capable individual. It looks like to me this lawsuit is more designed to make Kodak and others personally pay the price for that golden parachute and not to actually obstruct the deal. That's why I wanted to put it in the front of the video. We're past the point now where the approval process has gone through for Activision Blizzard as a company, so they have accepted that this deal is okay with them. Now they're going through the regulatory processes, and honestly, with everyone cracking down on big tech, there is always a chance this deal might not go through. So I wanna make sure when these lawsuits pop up, we talk about them, we're thorough about them, we get all into it, 
and discuss properly. But that's what's going on with the current lawsuit. Let's move on over to what's happening with the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase. So just in yesterday's video, we talked about how my buddy Randall Thor heard through the grapevine that all internal studios for Xbox had something planned for the show. Obviously, this is where decisions come in and they say, what do we want to keep? What do we want to save for maybe Gamescom or the Game Awards? How do we want to dole all of this out? Now we have another more official update on how long it'll be and that'll bring the conversation into perspective. So this was discovered over on Reddit. It says it seems the Xbox Bethesda showcase will be around 90 minutes only. If you go to the official Xbox website, you'll see that you can add to your calendar the actual showcase. And when you do, like I did right here, you'll see that the details mention the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase going for about an hour and a half, which would be about the same as last year. The reason why some people are saying only 90 minutes as you saw in the title of the reddit post and there's some debating going on there is everyone knows that todd howard likes to hit the stage and talk about his baby for a long long time i've been of the side of the argument that said this has to happen for starfield this is the brand new thing if you did this for fallout for example which we saw with fallout 4 and 76 something we've been very familiar with then you have to do it for the brand new game series that no one really knows anything about outside of potential leaks, a couple of screenshots of the concept art, and what Bethesda has talked about. What I'm starting to expect more and more, and I'll get into some of my thoughts on Starfield in particular, because I know in a previous video I had mentioned I would be worried if they wouldn't do a 30-minute showcase, and I think that may have been rash of me, so I want to call myself out on that, but I do foresee this being a little bit like the Forza Horizon 5 preview, where they spent a good 10 minutes with the game showing it all off, and I do think that would be okay. I just think for a brand new IP, I don't want to say any more sound the alarms because again, I do think that was rash of me to say, but I will definitely fall on the sword that says you got to show more than that. For the brand new IP, like Forza, we know it's 10 minutes. I could see if Starfield's pushing closer to 20 minutes, a 20 minute presentation, that's totally fine with me. If we're looking at 10 minutes, that'll be 10 glorious minutes. But when we're talking about a brand new IP capturing all of that, unless they have a much longer marketing campaign planned than what we've seen from Bethesda Game Studios, this would be a pretty dramatic shakeup for them. Not going out on stage and being the big show capper, but just a part of the show here. And that, of course, could mean that deeper into the summer, maybe we see Starfield reappear, I don't know, at Gamescom. Maybe we see another trailer in September. You know, that's something that Fallout 4 did, which was pop up with a couple of trailers. 76, if I remember correctly, was a lot more quiet, but Fallout 4 had the special trailers, they had the gameplay trailers, they had the Pip-Boy trailers, they had a ton of different pieces of marketing for that game, and it was gigantic because of it. I just can't fathom a world where Bethesda Game Studios doesn't take that same approach to Starfield to make it the next big thing. However, this show, as much as I'm excited for Starfield, is bigger than that. It is going to be the main piece, the main offering, the main dish on the meal. However, there's going to be other supplemental pieces. And you got to remember that outside of the internal studios from Xbox and Bethesda, that there are third-party partners that may have to show their things. What about Contraband, we'll say? Are they going to show off Project Dragon? Are they going to show off Project Wu-Tang? Are they going to show off a multitude of these third-party games that they've been working on with companies that are outside of the internal studios? What do you show? Because as I mentioned in yesterday's video, it's looking more and more like this is the time where everyone would be ready to actually show something, just leaks aside. It just seems like that is the natural conclusion you could come to based off the timing of where all these studios are at and typically how long game development is. So that's very exciting. But knowing that it's 90 minutes means that I'm really crossing my fingers here that Xbox goes in on gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. There was a report late last year that Phil was kind of sitting there going, we kind of just had a lot of CGI again when it came to the Bethesda Xbox showcase last year. And if there's one thing that PlayStation did where they kicked the doors off of their showcase, where they showed off KOTOR, which was CGI, but they showed off, say, Wolverine. They showed off a new Spider-Man game. They showed off a ton of games there. All of it was mostly gameplay. An occasional CGI trailer here or there is fine. Like, I think Compulsion Games, as I talked about in my last video is good for me to be a CGI because Xbox has had that formula of like, here's the CGI, we'll see in a little bit with the gameplay. I would love gameplay first and foremost. That would be the most hype generated for it. But Xbox has had a formula I'm okay with with these new IPs. Getting this perspective, 
what is this IP first, and then seeing the gameplay in action. However, there's no denying the surprise factor of not knowing what the thing is, seeing the gameplay and going, oh, this is awesome. What's this new thing here? And learning more about it. Always gameplay is preferred. I'm a gameplay first guy, but I do understand Xbox's habits. I'm expecting a lot of gameplay this year. Again, based off the timeline of the development, I'm hoping that all these trailers we're going to see are mostly gameplay trailers. Fingers crossed on that, but 90 minutes, book it in your calendar, book your lunch breaks because it's in the afternoon for most of us, and we'll see you there. I'll certainly be live streaming it. It'll be my probably first live stream of the year because there haven't been any major events outside of like, I think one Nintendo Direct to stream. With that, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to our next bit of news here, which has to do with Psychonauts 2. So this was one of the best games that came out last year. This was a game that I completely held myself accountable for because I misread it totally. I saw it and went, this doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look like my speed. It ends up being this very thoughtful game discussing mental health. It had some of the best animation that we've seen in the industry in a while. And it was a nice, charming, 3D platformer, I still highly recommend you play Psychonauts 2 if you have yet to, but many of you probably have already, and in fact, you may have paid for it. So this comes from Lisette. I apologize if I say the first part of this last name wrong. I think it's Teeter Montgomery, but anyway, she writes, April Fool's Day was my last day at Double Fine. I have learned so much over the past four years about who I am as a leader and what it means to be a creative visionary. Thank you for trusting me to bring the world of Psychonauts 2 to life. She served as the art director, and might I add, she did a phenomenal job. My leadership resulted in shipping Double Fine's highest rated and best-selling game to date. And of course, she mentions a bunch of the nominations the game received as well. Why this is important is because we had only learned in 2015 that the best-selling game to date for Double Fine was Psychonauts 1 at around 1.5 million copies. And so it looks like Psychonauts 2 has already surpassed that in a shorter amount of time. And this is copies sold. Remember, this was also on PlayStation. But for a lot of Xbox fans where it was getting the major marketing, it was day one on Game Pass. So for me, I'm just really happy to see Double Fine have a true success here, their best-selling game to date. You know, it's a sequel to a cult classic, but why this is great is because Xbox is sitting on so many dead IP that you could look at and go, oh, well, if you continue that, it wouldn't sell well. This says otherwise. There is no bigger challenge than trying to sell a weird-ass game like Psychonauts 2. I always look at myself and say, I'm probably the perfect audience to figure out this game and, and if it's good for me or not. Like, I'm a hardcore gamer. I'm into this type of stuff, right? So if I was turning my nose up, I don't consider myself a closed-minded individual, so I can only imagine how some others outside of the core gaming circle would be like with this game. But I was totally wrong on that, too. I've been wrong a lot in this video. Holy crap. I got to work on my game. I got to sharpen up a little bit. The Xbox Bethesda showcase is coming. I got to sharpen up. But in all seriousness... This is phenomenal to see. I think it's one of the best games of last year. It was in my top 10 last year. I know I didn't think last year was a great year for gaming, but this was one of the bright spots for sure. Now let's talk about Fable. So I mentioned how there was a concept art leak. This was rediscovered concept art from around 2018, 2019 from one of the artists over at Playground Games. What you're looking at here is a character concept art test mood board, and you'll see a variety of different images that you could source online, whether it be fairy tale images, stuff from the 16th century, so on and so forth. Some people don't know what a mood board is, and I'd like to explain that because it's something I personally had to make. Not as clean as this, by the way. It was my first time going through it. Maybe one day I'll show it. If we could do like an art book for our game, that would be amazing just to show everyone the step-by-step -step process. But yeah, what a mood board effectively is, is you're conveying to the art director's what is the mental vision for this place? What are the real world references for this place that we are going to in our game? Because you can't say, I'm in Fallout, I'm going to Megaton. It's like, you can't go somewhere in the real world and be like that. Sometimes it's a culmination of ideas. How do the people dress there? What's the vibe of this place? That's what a mood board does. That's what it creates for the artist, and they feed off of that and capture their own unique vibe based off references that someone who has envisioned this area or this place, whatever, what they have thought of, and you convey that to the art director. With that, we have this piece of concept art here, which I'm going to be honest, I've never seen any of this before. Uh, there's some of the character concept art tests here, which again fall in line with what we're seeing from the mood board with the 16th century European visual styles. So it looks like they're really sticking with that. And this character just looks 
awesome. We don't know if this will be an official character in the game. Again, this is relatively old from like 2018, 2019. So don't run a mile with this. I personally, I didn't see it, but the main reason I wanted to talk about it was to explain the mood board and just, again, try to educate to the best of my abilities. I'm no expert, I'm no whiz here, but just to convey what I've learned along the way working on my own game. But still, Fable, speaking of the Xbox Bethesda showcase, We'll see about that one, fingers crossed, but again, I'm kind of feeling 2023. I've said that multiple times. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the Xbox news I've got for you in today's video. What do you think of everything I had to show you between the Activision Blizzard lawsuit again, the Xbox Bethesda showcase being 90 minutes, the concept art, the success of Psychonauts 2, fire away really looking forward to seeing your thoughts in the comments down below other than that follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below and a big thank you to all the patrons all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here stay sexy stay active i love you all peace